We are joined this morning by a respiratory and infectious disease specialist, and that is Dr. Joseph Alwot. We want to take your questions. If you have any questions as far as COVID-19 is concerned and how to protect yourself and perhaps more detailed information on the symptoms. I know you've been told fever, uh, continuous dry cough and uh, difficulty breathing. But if you'd like more detailed information on the symptoms, you can always call in. The number should be on your screen for you to take down and uh, dial us in. Now, uh, welcome to the program, Dr. Alwoch. Happy to have you. Thank now, you. in that last report by Vincent Odor was of the Senate when it resumed sittings yesterday. And we saw some senators with, with all sorts of masks. I mean, and uh, when you're looking at people coming on and off the ferry, they've been told they have to wear masks. But you see people even tying bandanas. They've improvised. Do these masks serve a purpose? Yes, masks do have a purpose. Let's agree. But we should not take them as kind of a, a magic bullet. Because some feel, people feel that when they are, uh, put on the mask, uh, they're safe. The important thing about the mask, particularly in public places, outside the healthcare setting, is that they, they make somebody who is having uh, COVID-19 uh, virus less infectious. Le and they do not actually protect you significantly from being infected by somebody. So putting the mask down makes that you are safe you not be infected. Because after all, we know very well that more, a lot of the infections go directly to the eye. So if you do have the mask that don't cover your eyes, then you are not safe. But most important is the social distance. That has been proved beyond reasonable doubt to be the most effective way of reducing infection and reducing, reducing the, uh, the epidemic. So having a mask itself without social distancing uh, does not uh, uh, give you much uh, protection. Okay. And then we have a problem that most of our um, masks are handled badly. If you have a mask on the whole day, keep touching it, putting it in and out. At the end of the day, it gets contaminated. Then you touch it, then you touch your eyes. You are really just accumulating infection on the mask and not preventing the mask. So we have, but basically as been shown even in New York, you can use any piece of cloth properly done to, uh, to protect you from spreading the virus. Oh, really? That is quite yes, interesting. Yes, oh, okay, if I know they prefer, there's no point crying that we don't have masks, we have to order masks. No, even the Bui the, um, the Muslim, that is very effective in uh, preventing the transmission of the uh, uh, droplets of okay. the format. But as far as healthcare workers, of course, it's critical personal protective um, equipment, and so perhaps we should not go and buy out all the masks and leave very few for the medical experts. You know, there the, um, the are two issues. There are some people who must open this have a mask. One is those who are nursing uh, people either the, at home who are proven uh, uh, coronavirus positive, those should have masks because they are, they're in danger, they're high risk. Another group is those who are working, or working near the people who are having the virus. Mm. But the, the doctors are at special high risk, so they need not only the mask, but they also need face pro protection, that is uh, spectacles or other, I mean, other equipment that can also protect the eye because you know very well that uh, some of the infection actually go through the eye. And a lot of uh, patients with uh, COVID-19 do have present with the conjectivitis, uh, that's inflammation of the eyes. Mm. And that shows you that the virus goes directly to the eyes. Okay, and is it, will any mask do? For the eyes or for the, the you know the one not for the eyes but <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah yes for uh, stopping transmission of the, uh, the virus there are some uh, N masks can do but from protecting you you need the N95 mask that is the one that does not allow much uh, infection to come through okay but so that's why you see the medical workers would be preferred to use N95 mask which is a bit tight and uh, covers you well. Okay, it's but that makes you. sense now for the caregivers and uh, the, the medical personnel. Yes, All that's right. true. Okay, you talk about social distancing, and uh, much ado has been made about the social distance, distancing. First of all, is it 1.5 meters? Is it 2 meters? What, what is this distance that's supposed to be what, between two people? 
has been established and recommended by the, the renowned Com Center for Communal Diseases is six feet. Now, well, you can call it the meters or whatever, but it's six feet. is safe distance because we've shown that after um, six feet, most of this uh, droplet will uh, fall to the, on a the surface on the ground. At the moment they fall on a surface, they achieve a size which is more than five microns. This is not this one. This is not respirable. Uh, I mean, uh, material. It does not go deep into your lungs to cause infection, because for these droplets to cause infection, they must go deep down at the bottom of the lungs, called the alveola, and they must necessarily be less than five microns in diameter to be effectively uh, traveling down to the lungs. So that's that's what happened to the distance. You know. So what, six feet. I mean, for the average person, what is that? Like, how, how would you describe it? Is it an arm's length? Yes. That's an easily. Okay. Oh, yeah, both arm's length, not just one arm. Both arm's length. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, but we've had talk of aerosol, that somebody could cough or sneeze, and then uh, the virus could sit in the air, or rather float in the air for a period of time. There are three modes of transmission of this virus commonly. One, of course, is the aerosol. Another one is just contact that is touching the uh, surface. And the other one is, of course, the droplet infection. Okay? Uh, of course, the aerosol is the most as important aspect of transmitting uh, virus, respiratory virus. So even talking, laughing, and sneezing. When you sneeze, you probably release thousands of virus in one good sneeze and we remain suspended in the air, and we are uh, looking for a, a, a surface on which they can enter the body. Fortunately, most uh, organisms cannot enter through contact, I mean, uh, intact skin, unless your skin has been cut or you are bleeding, but contact, I mean, intact skin does not permit uh, uh, entry of organisms, including the virus and bacteria. But your mucous membrane, that is uh, the eyes, the bottom of the eyes, where you normally scratch, uh, your mouth or your nose, uh, these are easily accessible to virus into the, so that they can go into the bloodstream and cause disease. Okay, so if somebody coughs, I've kept my social distance, but I come in, I walk in after them, am I still susceptible? What do you mean susceptible? If a person uh, who has COVID-19, mm -hmm coughs and mm. we've talked about uh, the aerosol yeah we are saying the droplets can say, stay suspended in the air am i at risk even if i keep my social distance yes okay you may be at risk because you've been shown that some of these um uh virus or uh, remain suspended in the air for longer than we thought and mostly in the surfaces if you've been shown that Depending on the surface, whether it's copper, um, carton box, it can remain as uh, long as from three hours to three days on the surface. That is why we, it's important to do this uh, so-called spraying of the street. You see them spraying. Because when people walk and cough on the street, and you go and touch some of the walls or, the, um, or whatever is on the street, you're possible you touch those uh, uh, surfaces which may contain the virus. Okay. So, there's still a lot to be known about this virus. Let's agree. Okay. Uh, and uh, although it's taken 100 years for us to have this experience, you may recall that it was 1918, that's 100 years ago, that we had a more serious, the same class, same family of viruses. That was called a uh, uh, pandemic. Uh, uh, it was called Spanish flu, okay. which and, killed and about 50 million people. Before we get into detail on, on the Spanish flu, because <laughs> I want to come back to that, we do have a caller. Uh -huh. And uh, we have Martin from Transnzoya on the line. Martin, can go ahead and ask your question? No, no, okay, it's my not question is that. It's Benedict. I asked, uh, I was, I, my, my question was going like this. Martin, can you hear me? Martin, you can go ahead and ask yes, your I'm question. Yes, I'm hearing you. Okay. What's your question? My question? If you are going to be locked down at a house no, from from no movement, how are we going to be given all all the basic needs like food, shelter, and plotting to the from the government and from the national government? How are we going to get these things even if we are going to be on locked on house without with, with no movement? Thanks. 
Okay, Martin, I think that's a question best directed at the government, and yeah. we will direct that question at them when they have their that's not medical, briefing uh, so. this afternoon. All right, we have Benedict. Uh, is it from Don Home? Benedict, yes. uh, what's your question for the doctor? Mm, I have two questions for the doctor. Question number one mm -hmm. is about Mark. Okay. A uh, few months ago, last year, uh -huh. I bought this gas mask for Mandamano. Yes. A big mask for the Mandamano. Uh -huh. So when the, during the Mandamano vote your political uh, rallies, uh -huh. so wakati watia gas, Nikivanga hiyo mask sikuwa nasikia anything I was okay because nilikuwa na big mimi gogo spear so my question was can I also use this mask uh -huh. as a pre to prevent this covid 19 simply why I'm asking that uh, you know the normal mask they are selling the medic one in haribika haraka ukiangalia mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, this one, this mind, I a and I clean it. Question number two: mm -hmm. This COVID nineteen, yes, is a virus. Mm -hmm. Okay, we rely on medic. Kitambo when I we we were in Ushago, mm -hmm. we normally okiwa na malaria, easy symptoms, uh, easy COVID nineteen. We used to drink muarubaine, and uh, there is a dini. This leaf which we call the Akecha Kecha, I think he knows the leaf. Ukikunywa, ukiwa na hizo symptoms, wanasema ni za coronavirus, ilikuwa inaisha within a day and you are okay. So those are my questions for the dog. All right, thank you very much. That's a Benedict from uh, Don Home. We have Kantai from Samburu as well. Kantai, what is your question for the doctor? All right, we seem to have lost him. Can I do please call us back? Uh, we're going to take your question next. But first, let's let's give Benedict okay. an answer. He says he's got a gas mask for the Mandamano and these um, other masks, yeah. you know, uh, don't last very long. Is it okay if he washes his, I mean, cleans his gas mask and reuses it? Will it at, work for him? At the moment, we don't have so-called re reusable or sanitizable masks. And most of the masks you see people use in public, it's recommended that don't use them for more than eight hours. If you keep them on for eight hours, then they're probably not serving much protection purposes. Uh, and most of the masks we use are not reusable. Okay, whatever you use doing that Vandamano, if it protected him, then it's just like using a, a handkerchief, a piece of cloth. Mm. So why not? It's, it, will, it will work. Mm. Oh, yeah. Why mean, not? Mean, okay. mean, if it works, yeah. The bottom line is to protect you from getting the aerosols, but above all, protect you from transmitting uh, the virus, if you have it, that is. Okay, Kantai is back on the line. Kantai from Samburi, what is your question for the doctor? Uh, yeah, yeah, um, my name is Kantai from Samburi. Okay. I just finished up my 14-day quarantine um, uh, today, because we traveled last Wednesday in the morning at around 6. Mm -hmm. um, one of the questions that I would like to ask the doctor is um, what can you do really to protect the older? You know, I know it's, it's possible for anyone to get any age, but if you look at the rate uh, in Italy, UK, where I came from, uh, a lot of people are dying at over 60. What can we do to protect them? I was thinking that the government shouldn't like put the coffee like at seven because of course, the virus doesn't spread, uh, uh, you know, spread by, by the darkness. But also, I understand that it, it caps it. But what can you do for these uh, 60 and above people? All right, that's a very good question. Yes. Uh, Dr. That is Kantai uh, from uh, Samburi. But be before we get to his questions, okay. we still need to finish with Benedict. So you said, you know, if it serves the purpose of protecting your eyes, your nose, you your mouth, yes. go ahead. All right, you have your answer on that one, Benedict. The second question he had was on Mwarbaini. He says, you know, Mwarbaini, 40, even from the 40 can cure perhaps 40 ailment, ailment, ailments. Yeah. Uh, is it a possible cure for COVID-19? Okay. Okay, that question scientifically may be difficult to uh, comment on, but at the moment, the COVID virus, we are, the, the scientific world is very desperate. We have not yet hit the right cure, so anything can be tried. If he has got sufficient information about that product, I'm sure the scientist would like to try it. It cannot be, we cannot uh, kind of um, write it off 
just like that, because anything can be tried. But the sad thing is that, for example, chloroquine was tried during the Spanish flu 100 years ago. It didn't work so well. And then the doctors made the biggest mistake. They never followed up on uh, serious uh, research to improve chloroquine and its effect on viral diseases. So 100 years ago, we were just the same as we were in 1918, mm -hmm. still talking about chloroquine. Is it working? Is it not working? And now in America, they've given this kind of emergency permission for it to be tried. Yes. So now we're going to have uh, a result of a controlled trial on the use of uh, chloroquine in COVID. Probably, which is something we should have done 100 years ago. Mm. All right, so we can't rule it out. We can't rule out. <laughs> no, we can't rule out anything at the moment. No, okay. no, we have no reason to rule about it. In fact, a lot of discoveries are made when you probably ignored what would work. Mm. Yes. All right. Okay, let's get to the questions uh, posed by Kantai. He's talked about uh, having just finished his 14-day quarantine and then went ahead to ask about how we can protect the elderly. It's, it's what has been said 100 times, that is social distancing. And in Europe, they told the people over 60, certainly even over 70, stay at home. Don't go out at all time. Um, there are a lot of other uh, precautions you may have, but nothing nothing will be more efficient of protecting you than social distancing, particularly if you have got some comorbid condition. They've been given, it's been shown that also, if you have um, flu vaccination or pneumonia, you prevent the complication, but you do not prevent you from getting the uh, COVID. Although if you get a COVID, it may not be as bad if you have some of this uh, vaccination. But at the moment, what you do with the old men, keep away from them. And the best thing he can do is not to visit his old man in the village. If you're in quarantine, let him keep away from any old man that he likes. And let's <laughs> once he wants to get rid of that old man, then he can go near him. Oh, my. Okay. Because even after so-called quarantine, or even the people have been cured, it been shown that so-called uh, cured uh, patients are capable of uh, transmitting uh, infection even eight days after being there, they've been declared cured. All right, really? Yes. Okay, so I want to come back on the asymptomatic phase and whether or not um, you're still able to transmit the virus when you're at the asymptomatic phase of things. But first, let's go to Rongo where we have Bernard Ojuang. And uh, he tells us that the authorities are closing down bars and salons. Is it, Bernard? Well, I thank you very much. It, since morning, it has been a running battle between traders here in Rongo and the police. And uh, this is just one of the ways of intensifying the fight against COVID-19. And of course, it is uh, an order that was given by uh, Governor Okoth Obado last week that all markets in Migori County be closed. And of course, today as we speak, since morning, uh, 6, p 6 a.m. in the morning, all shops have been, uh, the police have been moving around, closing all shops. And uh, as we speak currently, all barber shops, salons, uh, food viewers, and also boutiques have been closed down. And even the market here, just, just, just next to me here, is closed. And of course, traders are saying that they, uh, this is where they are getting money and uh, they are appealing uh, to the governor and also the police at least to leave them do something so that they can also uh, uh, get something that will put on the table when it comes in the evening where they will be ensuring that uh, the Kenyans are adhering uh, or, uh, or obeying the rule that the curfew and currently uh, without wasting time you'll just allow me to talk to one of uh, the traders here just to get what they are saying okay you, you it has been a battle between you and the police what's happening this is to nafanya business tumefungwa so soko atuwezi hata kuuza vitu tuko na njaa serikali watusaidie sisi watuletee chakula tukae naye kwa ndani sisi hatuwezi kukimbia wa polisi wanatuchapa sisi hata sahi tumesa tuchapia kwa na fimbo atuwezi so, kufanya hata soko, soko, soko imefungwa soko imefungwa corona iko nyingi sisi tunakuwa na njaa hatuwezi hata kukula watoto tuko na kwa nyumba sasa tu, sisi ni wana enche tunakula nini serikali tusaidie sisi hakuna chenye tutasesi tunatuna nini tunaweza kukula tunakula nini serikali jamani Sana, you've just heard from them. They are saying that the governor, uh, Migori County Governor Koto Badus, will come up uh, with a solution. And uh, they are saying that they are, they are low abiding citizens and they are trying at least to 
get uh, make a living on a, day, on a daily here at the market and they're now asking the governor at least to review this time and enable them get something a daytime so that when it come to evening hours they will be uh, obeying the curfew rule back to you all right. Uh, thank you, Bernard. The question that that lady just raised in terms of what does a government or how does a government expect us to feed ourselves and our children if they're closing our businesses was also posed by our first caller this morning. Hopefully, uh, we'll get an answer from the government on that particular question. All right. Uh, we also have Martin Muranga, uh, Martin Maura, sorry, in Muranga County. Martin tells us there are also closures in that county. Martin, what's going on? Yes, I thank you so much. It's a bright uh, Wednesday morning here from County 021. As you have rightly said, uh, in a normal day, this stage would be full of matatus that are heading towards the neighboring county of Sagana. But today in the morning, we have just received communication from the county government that they have decided to close it down. Uh, simply because they are saying these terminals, uh, the matatu terminals, they are not uh, adhering to the regulations that have been set aside. Uh, without uh, taking much time, I just want to talk to the person in charge of the enforcement just to tell us why they have decided to close it today. One minute only, uh, just tell us, uh, start with your name and tell us uh, why you have decided to close this terminus today. Thank you very much. My name is Samuel Mwangi, uh, aka Kefeti. I'm in charge of uh, this enforcement from the county government. We have decided to shut down or to close these terminals because uh, it is this stage the matatu are failing people from uh, Kerenyaga to Moranga, Embu, Karatina. And for the last five days, this matatu has not been adhering to the rules and regulation, carrying eight passengers. Second, uh, we have decided to halt all transport outside Moranga County. Uh, Moura, we cannot take and take more chances and we cannot wait and see our people dying we have closed down this stage and this is not a joke and anybody who will go against this rule or contravene we will cancel the tlb we are in coordination with the national government through the county commissioner and our governor is very clear that we must protect our people we have also closed down those food defenders who sell food at the wrong side uh, the road sites and from today uh, business it will not be business as usual because even the markets, people from Kagio, they come to Mokoyo, and we, we, can't, we can't ignore it more again. Now, what we are saying is, Namuranga County, led by Governor Mongo area, we are very clear that Watu Wakae Nyumbani. Thank you so much. I can even see from the message behind your, your jacket here, it says, if I can be able to see, can I turn this way? Uh, it says, stay at home, Kae Nyumbani. No, we are to. Thank you so much. Uh, only those are some of the few things that the county is trying to do just to ensure that this uh, disease does not, uh, is not reported here in Moranga County. And the governor yesterday has been making calls asking the county government, uh, sorry, the national government, to please uh, ensure that uh, stop all matatus plying uh, in the inter county. He's saying that if this if can be stopped, then the spread can be stopped. It, it is easier to deal with the, with the disease when it is local than when it is being spread through the public uh, service vehicles. Uh, those are some of the few things that the county government is doing. And he has rightly said, yes, they're also uh, doing, uh, closing the markets. Food vendors have been told to go home. You know there will be a lot of job, job losses, job cuts. Even people who are self-employed will be affected. But uh, I think it is better to save a life. You know, as people say, we can recover the economy, you can recover a business, but you cannot recover a life lost. That is uh, from Moranga. Back to you, Olive. Right, thank you, Martin. Uh, Dr. Ari, uh, you know, we, we saw the gentleman there wearing uh, the lab coat with stay at home uh, printed behind it. So people are at home. Can COVID-19 be transmitted through sex? No, but uh, uh, no, it's possible. But you've seen the COVID uh, virus has been discovered, I mean, isolated in feces. And it's possible as uh, since sex, you, you have uh, mucous membrane contact. Uh, biologically, it would be possible, but epidemiologically, it has not been established uh, to be a, uh, a major route. At the moment, it's a respiratory disease, not a sexual terminal disease, and respiratory diseases are essentially aerosol transmission. So let's stay, stay away from sex at the moment and stick on the uh, respiratory spread. Kissing, yes. 
Yes. Okay. Yeah. That's contact. All right. And okay. Uh, members. Yeah. Okay. So how different? Um, we've talked about a gentleman who says he was in he was on in on uh, he was quar he quarantined himself yeah. uh, for fourteen days. He's just come out of it. Um, how? So if you're displaying. Okay, how are the COVID-19 symptoms different from the normal HOMA symptoms? Funny enough, they're not very different, except in the severity. In the same, you know, the sneezing, the coughing, uh, the fever, the headache, the sore throat. It's just the severity. Now, this group of uh, 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 virus, there's the same family. If you take uh, the so-called SARS, that is severe uh, acute respiratory distress uh, syndrome, which was uh, also in Asia or Middle East uh, Respiratory Syndrome, MARS, they all have the same symptoms. In fact, they're in the same group. It's the severity and the effect on the people they affect. Uh, that is on the mortality. That is the major, uh, the major difference. Uh, in fact, that's why I say that, because with the other diseases, you've got a bit of um, Im immunity, limited immunity after the infection. So at the moment, we, we, we can extrapolate scientifically that those who have recovered from um, COVID-19 should have some protection from reinfection, at least in the short time. Mm. How long uh, this will last, will time will tell. But at the moment, we, if you go by natural history of infection. So yes. if you survive it, you should develop an immunity to it? Yes, uh, because the, the same group of virus that we've seen, you develop Im immunity to the others. Okay. So the, this this can be expected. All, All right. right. Of course, it's not hundred percent immunity, but it's a measure of immunity. The difference with COVID uh, virus is that the, the incubation period is very long. You know, most viruses have what twenty four hours incubation period. Now during this incubation period, most people do not have uh, symptoms, and they 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 they, they keep infecting uh, persons. Okay. Then uh, the worst thing is that even after so called being cured you're still capable of infecting other people. So you that you makes said for up to eight days, is it? Yeah, up to eight days. This has been shown in some studies. Wow, so it's n that's interesting. So you still need to stay away from other people for eight, an additional According eight days. According to current evidence, yes, mm -hmm. safely to stay away from people. Mm. Even after it be declared a keyword, she don't go and jam and start uh, taking champagne in the public, say, yeah, now I'm safe, no. Mm. All right, uh, so uh, part of uh, the, the problem that has presented itself, as you said, uh, with the coronavirus is that it's you can be asymptomatic for a longer period than yeah. uh, is usual with these yeah. types of so viruses. Period. Because yeah. I remember the health CS, you know, was being taken to task. Period, yeah. yeah, he was being asked, you know, you're saying you're screening people at the airport, but then later on they import uh, COVID-19 into the country. So can you still spread the virus even at that asymptomatic stage? Well, of course you do. <coughs> that has been the problem. <coughs> this is where they were caught in Asia <coughs> and America. Because the, originally they said that they are going only to um, screen people who are uh, symptomatic tests. Then they realized that they are missing a lot of infectious cases. So that's why they say now that you screen all contact, symptoms or no symptoms. And in Germany, they are almost screening almost anybody who offered. Mm. Uh, because they realized that if you go by symptoms, the so called high index, uh, those people are already on contact or those who are um, staying with positive cases, you may miss a lot of people who have the disease and yet they don't have the symptom. So if you have the slight history, history of travel or staying in the vicinity with somebody with COVID, symptoms, no symptoms, ideally should be tested. Okay. Again, <coughs> I just remind you that we you can call in. There should be a number on <coughs> which you can use to dial in. Dr. Shari, how has COVID-19 changed how you practice medicine? Most of all, it scared me to the hell. So I've stopped practicing medicine now. At the moment, I'm not, because of my age, uh, I'm, I'm advised to stay away from the hospital. As a respiratory physician, I see a lot of people who cough. And we know that COVID present with uh, um, coughs. So that means that uh, I, re I refrain from treating my usual patients who cough because I don't know who is having COVID or not. So it's certainly changed uh, practice medicine. At the moment, I don't practice any medicine. I, I can't afford. Mm -hmm. yeah. I leave it for younger people, okay? Because <laughs> me, if I get the COVID... Uh, Are we not missing out on your expertise then? 
I, I can give it orally. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> and stay but you know, a lot of this, uh, now we are, um, we are going into the age of artificial intelligence. In fact, they already started using artificial intelligence to make diagnosis of COVID, particularly in the CT scan. And in the future, we're going to develop robots to do a lot of these procedures. Because robots are not scared of infection, being infected. So it will reduce the scare from a lot of um, uh, healthcare workers who, who have, are afraid of being in contact with the uh, infectious cases because they can be infected. We know they are dying. They always died over the years, infectious diseases. So, but we will be very slow in uh, developing high-powered robots that can take over a lot of. But we know in, in 30 years, uh, artificial intelligence is going to take over a lot of work from the doctors. Okay. Not everything, yeah. All right. So um, part of the fear that surrounds COVID-19, uh, there was some concern that it could cause some permanent damage to your respiratory system. Has that been shown to be true? Yeah, that's true. It's, in, in, you know, it could, it does. That's for sure. And uh, the fact that you have been uh, cured of COVID uh, does not make you sure that your lungs are free. As we say, it's a primary respiratory condition. It does leave some uh, permanent damage or long-standing damage. Yes, it does cause. So, so what kind of damage? It, uh, the lungs go with pulmonary fibrosis. It, 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 it reduces uh, or destroys your lung tissues mm -hmm. and reduces its um, uh, efficiency in uh, churning out in and out oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide. Okay. So lifelong, does it leave you susceptible to other viruses or what does that Yes, it leaves you susceptible to other infections, mm -hmm. other viruses, and above all, it may lead to uh, chronic respiratory failure. Well, that's very, quite serious. Um, yeah. All more the reason. And most so uh -huh. you've already had damaged lungs, say from TB or asthma or chronic bronchitis. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, you've talked about the CT scanning. Yeah. So how do, you, how do they detect the virus using that equipment? No, it's the features that you see on the, on the CT scan. Mm -hmm. Because if you see an X-ray or a CT scan <coughs> from somebody who's got TB, you'll be able to see that this, that features you see on the CT scan are from TB or, or from uh, any cancer of the lung or from other infection. So same thing, uh, high use of CT scan of the lung has shown that there are some specific features which you see when the COVID affects the lung. And now they already programmed artificial intelligence to detect those things. And you know, when it comes to reading of the, uh, most or some CT scan, artificial intelligence is more efficient than the human radiologist. Mm. And they're likely to produce more reliable results. And they do it in a shorter time. They do many cases in a shorter time. It's a question of volume. Because you know, it, it depends on uh, background data. You know, at the moment, there's so much information about COVID-19. The Journal of American Medical Association, which prints some of the highest uh, medical information in the world, now receives about 1,000 uh, papers every day for printing of all this, because of printing of COVID, on, uh, on uh, covid 19 from all over the world. That shows you how much uh, work people are doing at the moment. Mm. The medical information is growing at a such a stage that no normal human beings will be able to cope with this knowledge. And that's why artificial intelligence will come in because it can cope with so much information that comes in every day, which most doctors cannot cope with okay. as much as they may pretend. Okay, so the government, uh, you know, there's been this whole debate about perhaps it could be more numbers. It's just a question of they haven't been tested yet. How does that testing process work? What are they testing for? How is it a swab? How does it yeah, work? Yeah, at the moment, the most effective way is uh, uh, most common use is the nasal swab and uh, the back of the throat, the pharyngeal swab is used. Uh, but now they develop some tests in America which uh, is based on so-called gene uh, expert, which can also even use the blood. But unfortunately, it cannot be used on a large scale. Now, it's limited, because it, it takes only 45 minutes to get the result back. But they only used to try the patient. That's it's already patients who are already in the ward uh, and already highly suspected, or health care workers 
who wants to go into NASA patient, but they want to know whether they're positive before they start nursing those uh, COVID okay. patients. All so right. you can go do that test and get your uh, re uh, report in less than an hour. In less than an hour. But not yet. Allow while. me to take one question, then we come back to okay. that. All right. We have Austin from Buru Buru. Austin, you can go ahead. Yes, yes, yes. Good morning. Morning. Yeah, I have just one question. I'm sorry, I just filled in late. But uh, I don't know that the doctor has just taken us through it. I just want to know. One, mm -hmm. if the person, has, the person who was tested and became positive, he has gone through the medication, is it there's a possibility of the same person I, once has recovered? Can he be positive again after recovered? That's okay. one. Okay. Two, maybe can I know how does this disease, this virus, kill? I've never understood once got the virus. What brings about a killing? How does it kill? How does it kill? How the yes. virus kills? Okay. That Are you done? Good. Sorry? Yeah, I'm done. All right. We also have Ongoro from uh, Kibra. Ongoro, what's your question? Okay. My question is, uh, I just have only one question. Okay. Okay. We are being told about the mask that we are, we are using are alcohol-based. So my question is, uh, why can we use the any alcohol that we know so that maybe we dip the ordinary cloth or the, many, or the mask that has been used, like uh, the doctor is, being, is saying that we use it for eight hours, then we dip it again in the alcohol, then we use it. What is the problem with that? Can it be effective? Okay, sorry, can you please, uh, if you could just please reduce the volume on your TV and then uh, ask the question again. I, I didn't get you clearly. Okay. The question is, I just only have one question. Okay. We are being told that the mask we are using is alcohol based. Uh huh. Uh, so uh, the question is, can we use the ordinary alcohol that you know, the speed that you know? Okay. Keep the clock. Uh huh. Uh, or the mask that has been used, we can dip it uh, in the alcohol, then we reuse it. Oh, uh -huh. okay. All right, all right. I've, I've got you. I've got you. Thank you very much. It's possible. All right, Ongoro. Uh, the doctor will answer you just in a few moments. Um, but first, to, uh, we had a caller from Buru Buru, and uh, his second question was, I think, how does uh, COVID, he's not understood how COVID-19 kills. Oh, it's very simple, and you can get it from its uh, name. You know, you know, the proper name is COV-SARS-2. Now, SARS stands for Severe Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome, and that's, that's kill. In short, you die because of respiratory failure. That is why we keep singing about the ventilators, because these people are just are going to respiratory failure, they stop breathing. And uh, in the meantime, they cannot be held by ventilators. So in short, it kills you by respiratory failure. It may be uh, other complications may occur, but that's the commonest uh, mode of death, pure, if you just due to SARS, is respiratory failure. So do you mean you suffocate? Or? Well, you, you are, your respiratory system is destroyed by the virus, by severe inflammation. You know, mm -hmm. it's an inflammatory process. Severe inflammation that is no longer be capable of taking in and out air that you need oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide, mm -hmm. respectively. And then you, if you, you don't breathe, you can get fresh air into your blood system, then you, are, uh, you can survive. That's why you have to use the machine, the ventilators. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, but it's not like strangulating you. Uh -huh. This is a uh, physiological process. Mm. Okay. Yeah. So it, you, literally it strangles you? Well, in, uh, yeah, if you think of it simply, it's like literally strangling you. So you can't get oxygen. You can't take in air. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, so and your blood does not get oxygenated. So you go into respiratory failure. That is mean your oxygen, your body does have uh, oxygen in the blood system. Mm. And so you, you cannot function. And no, oh, oxygen is like the petrol uh, that drives you as, uh, all the activities in your body. Okay, yeah. so that's why there's so much, uh, a, a lot of noise going around the ventilator. Yes, exactly. And, and ICU yeah, beds. Because those who are severely sick and eventually die, they die because of uh, respiratory failure. Okay, yeah. so that's perhaps for lacking access to the ventilator. Yes, exactly. Okay, so um, his first question had to do with if you test 
positive and then you're given the drugs, can you test positive again? Oh, uh, we don't know, but it's possible. But what we know now, because the, the current tests available are not 100% perfect. If I'd be shown that quite a number of fellows who come in and they test for the first time negative, yet they have the virus in the system, if you followed up after a few months, and it's recommended that maybe some of these people should repeat their test after about um, seven days, then we found that they're positive. So, although if, if it is negative, doesn't say 100% that you are negative. If it is positive, then you are likely to be infected. Okay. Mm. Okay, but he, he talked of drugs, but this is a virus. So the patient, patients who have presented uh, with COVID-19 and have been admitted, how are they being treated? What is known as supportive treatment? Because I said clearly, the COVID virus, is, uh, first of all, it uh, uh, promotes other infection, even bacterial infection of the system. It did not interfere with their kidney function. It interferes with the GAT, may cause diarrhea, and the rest get you dehydrated. So you get supportive, and you get fluids, electoral, then you get treatment for antibiotics with the, for ordinary uh, bacterial infection. But there's no specific treatment for the virus itself. But this is just supportive. This is a kind of uh, uh, damage control. Okay, just controlling the damage is causing to keep you alive. That's hands of ventilation. Ventilation is not killing the virus, it's just ventilator. It's just going to help you breathe because the virus has destroyed your breathing system. So with ventilators, you'll be able to sustain yourself until the virus becomes less in your system and you're able to take over. Okay, so why are those of an advanced age particularly susceptible? What is it about them? It's purely immunity, okay. As you grow older, your immunity <coughs> becomes uh, less. And let's, let's agree. At the end of the day, whatever you use with this antibiotic, whatever medicine, it cannot work as efficiently if your body does not uh, work well. It's like having very good, powerful um, military weapons, uh, fighters, but you don't have the personnel to man them, okay? So you can have very good, powerful drugs and viral that will work, but if the body immunity does not help these uh, drugs to work, then you're not going to get the, achieve the desired uh, results. So it's sort of you can immunity to the body, which is a natural way, uh, nature's way of helping you. After all, over the years, we've survived without medicine. We survived all these, um, okay, some of us survived all this infection without having to have any antibiotics or other medicine. Okay. Uh, Ongoro's uh, question uh, from uh, Kibra. Mm. And he asked, you know, can we use just normal alcohol, uh, first of all? You know, people have made this huge joke of it, you know, and they've used these mm. screw caps on it, and then they're like, you know, if mm. just use the normal alcohol to spray, it's cheaper than hand sanitizer. Uh, so, first of all, can you use it to sanitize the, you know, vodka? Alcohol on its own. Yes. You need a lot of alcohol uh, uh, base. Uh, alcohol on its own may, may be actually be very uh, uncomfortable and very. Uh, actually, may even hurt you on its own. So you need it uh, with a bit of, uh, of soap or other uh, sanitizer. You need up to 60% alcohol a maximum to sanitize. But 100% alcohol, why would you use it anyway? When you got alternatives, when you can make the alternative, now we, you don't you don't uh, you don't uh, change a winning horse. We know that the other sanders work as well, so we can use it. Okay, so I, I don't need to go to a wines and spirits. It's not interchangeable with hand no, sanitizer. No. It's not. You can drink it. But is it effective in terms of sanitization? No, no it's not. It's no. not effective. No. Okay, um, and he also talked about uh, dipping the masks, because we knew you've told us you should not no, wear your mask for more than masks, eight hours. Those masks should be disposable. The best thing is to and get another one. Uh -huh. Yes. Okay, and yeah. how do you remove the mask? Yes, in fact... Um, Shortly, we'll be showing a video. We'll make a video to show the people how to put on the mask and how to remove it and how not to touch it. Because if you keep touching it and then touching your eyes, and if there's some uh, droplets on, on the mask, it's not very useful. And uh, most of even the gloves, people are very happy going to the supermarket and using gloves. And they keep it on the whole day, and then they, they feel they look like. Uh, 
uh, some science, scientists at work, uh, and they, they just they just deceive themselves. You get you probably spread more infection. Really? Because I've seen that in the mall. You'll see the security guards with gloves. I don't know how often they change uh, them. Yeah. All those things, see, let us agree and let us not deceive the public in this COVID virus. All these funny equipment, all these measures will not work unless you keep social distancing full stop. Okay. Social distancing will stop you from spreading the virus and will stop you from receiving the virus if you don't have it. Mm. And that, at the moment, is a proven fact. And let us stress it, okay? And let's not di give uh, divert the uh, attention of people of, from social distancing by k uh, bringing these side shows of use of gloves and uh, glorifying the use of masks. Okay, masks are good, but in public places on the on the streets, uh, like I see many people, even I'm sure some of you in the studio use it. Uh, they are not 100% useful, okay? They may be useful if you have the disease yourself, you stop it from spreading, but it's not something that we should glorify at all. Okay. Okay. All right. You Give mentioned... the wrong impression. Eh? Okay. Mm. And, and also how you take off the gloves matters. Everything. Even how you take off your uh, prone. Because, you know, even uh, the cleaners, when you have nursing uh, COVID virus, even those who are cleaning the floor, even those who are giving them food, and all those uh, other uh, paramedical staff working, they must also be shown how to put on and, and take out the personal protective equipment. Yeah. Okay. All right, you mentioned the Spanish flu as perhaps the, the last epidemic we dealt with of similar mm -hmm. uh, proportion. Um, what lessons uh, can we take away from that? Funny enough, we've took nothing. Funny enough, we only cried about it. That's why I told you, for example, we tried chloroquine. It worked in some cases, <clears throat> but we never followed it further to in another virus. Because the same virus uh, family, H1N1, that was, uh, caused the pandemic in uh, Spanish flu. And uh, we learned all about the uh, epidemiology and the infection uh, spread. But then we, it's, it died, and then we went uh, relaxed. We just look at the glorified. <coughs> Later, we be considered a non communicable disease or non infectious disease. <coughs> because with the um, advent of antibiotics and effective antimicrobial, we relaxed. We said, okay, we have defeated infection. Now let's look for non infectious disease. That's why every time we're being caught uh, unawares, with, because we, we're concentrating on. High power diseases like heart attack, diabetes, and the rest, and we know we paid very little uh, attention to infectious diseases because we thought we have we are done with, with them. Mm. All right, um, Doctor, you can see <coughs> we need some water, but we are almost yes. uh, we are almost done. If we can get some water, Henry, what happened to my coffee? <laughs> yeah, it's it's there, but <laughs> it's branded. Um, j yes, th finally. We, be, we are being told, you know, how do we defeat it? Because we are being told, okay, we need to flatten the curve. And the way to flatten the curve, uh, for example, in, in Kenya, we are being told, you know, don't come out between the hours of 7 p.m. and 5 a.m. Uh, in different jurisdictions, you know, groups, no, a group three is a crowd, is what they've been told. If you're going to work out, you need to work out alone and, you know, within certain limitations. Is this the way to beat exactly. the virus? Exactly. You know, we know very well that this virus causes problem first of all, because it's got a long incubation period, okay? And then uh, sometimes it takes a long time before we discover one is positive. And then even after discovering, it may take a long time before you put them into isolation. And during this period, they're infectious. So we need to uh, uh, do all this thing. Incubation period, do quarantine, okay? You reduce social uh, distancing. To reduce infection of chassis. Uh, those who are already symptoms, test as many as possible. Test, test, do three things. Test, test, test. And if they are positive, do the necessary. Isolation. Okay. So you have to do these things. And in all these things, each of them will need social distancing from those who are already infected or those who don't know infected. And there's no shortcut at the moment. If you don't do that, you get nowhere. Mm. Mm. I mean, the whole world can be wrong. I mean, everybody's doing social distancing. Everybody. 
so in your mind, how much longer do we have uh, to do this? Because, you know, of course... Uh, At the moment, the projection in the world that it will be maybe up to June, July, <coughs> or it to flatten out. June, July. Yeah. All right. So you, you think of the next three months. If you think it's shorter than that, good luck. Three months. Minimum. Of, of paralysis. Yeah, this is already computer projection epidemiologically. All right, there you have it. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Okay. Joseph Alwoch. We need to get the good doctor some water. Some water. Uh, thank you so much uh, for your questions uh, this morning and for your company. Uh, we hope to engage you further uh, because clearly if we're going to go through three months of this, there are so many questions that will come up even as more research is uh, conducted. That's it uh, for me.